You're dispatched to an MVC, car versus tree. It's an 80 degrees sunny day. Police are on scene. All right, scene safe to be assigned? Scene safe. All right, mechanism of injury? Car versus tree. Car versus tree. I've got one patient. I'm gonna yes. call for additional resources. You said police are on scene. We're gonna call for uh, additional ALS unit, uh, fire as well. Make sure we have enough resources. I'm gonna direct my part and take inline immobilization to C-spine. And as I approach my patient, what do I see as my general impression? You find a 26-year-old male lying supine on the ground. There's no obvious hemorrhage or agonal breathing. The patient is lying next to the car on the shoulder of the road. Police have secured the scene and are diverting traffic. The car struck a tree head on. There's 18 inches of intrusion to the front end of the vehicle. There's airbag deployment, starring on the windshield, and steering wheel deformity. Bystanders tell you that the patient was the driver of the vehicle. The patient exited the vehicle, then collapsed in the position that you found him. Okay, uh, so high priority patient, just based off the mechanism of injury. My partner has inline immobilization of C-spine. Um, so as I come in, I'm going to try to uh, elicit a response for my level of consciousness. Hey, Sarah, can you hear me? No. Uh, I'm going to elicit a painful response. Not. All right, so this time my patient is unresponsive. My partner has in line mobilization of C-spine. I'm going to come in. I'm going to open the airway with a modified jaw thrust. I'm looking uh, inside the airway to see if there's any blood, any teeth, any secretions, vomitus. Do I notice anything in the airway? It's pain. All right, so at this time we're going to size in a certain OPA from the tip of the ear to the corner of the mouth. I'm going to insert that 90 degrees, rotate until the flange is flush with the lips. Does my patient accept my OPA? Yes. Okay, so at this time we're going to expose the chest. Um, I'm, I'm palping down the sternal body. I'm checking the integrity of the thoracic cavity. I'm looking for any signs of uh, bruising, uh, discoloration, uh, paradoxical motion, open sucking wounds. Is there anything that uh, catches my attention that I should deal with immediately? Paradoxical motion on the right side. On the right side. Okay, so uh, with paradoxical motion, that's indicative of a flail segment. So at this time, I'm going to use my stethoscope and I'm going to auscultate lung sounds. Um, and what do I have for lung sounds? Patient is breathing at a rate of 34 times a minute with diminished and clear respirations. All right, so uh, diminished on the affected side, clear on the unaffected side? Correct. All right, so at this time we're going to splint uh, that paradoxical motion uh, with internal uh, splinting using our uh, BVM, positive pressure ventilation. We're gonna attach our BVM to high flow of oxygen and we're gonna ventilate this patient one breath every six seconds for a rate of 10 a minute. I want my partner to uh, let me know and communicate with me if there's any uh, challenge with bagging the patient. At this time, do we have good bag compliance and do we have symmetrical chest rise with ventilation? Yes. All right, so at this time, uh, we're going to aggressively monitor this and be prepared for, right now we have a simple pneumothorax. We're gonna watch that to become a tension pneumo. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check my circulation. I'm checking for a carotid and a radial pulse. Pulse is tachycardic at a rate of 104, weak but present radial pulse, and a strong carotid pulse. Okay, so my present pulses are a little bit tacky, and my radial is weaker than my carotid. My skin vitals? Pale, cool, diaphoretic. Okay, and as I check, do I notice any superficial bleeding or any gross hemorrhage to my patient? No obvious hemorrhage. Okay, um, and so as I do a uh, line glove sweep as I come under my patient and checking my gloves as I come out, do I notice any bleeding? on the posterior aspects of my patient? No. All right, so at this time, we've completed our primary assessment, our ABCs. We've determined that we're ventilating our patient. They have a paradoxical uh, flail segment. Uh, they're unresponsive. They're pale cool diaphoretic. So we're gonna start to immediately uh, treat this patient for shock. They're a high priority patient. We wanna minimize our scene time to less than 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna call for uh, additional resources and a long board. And while they're coming with that, I'm gonna start my uh, rapid assessment. I'm starting at the top, the crown of the head, any deformity, anything to the back of the head? No obvious skull depression. Okay, any battle signs or ble blood or CSF fluid coming from the ears? No. Pupils, are they pearl? Yeah. All right, any fluid or blood coming from the nose? No. All right, any damage to the zygomat or to the mandible? No. All right, uh, OPA, is it still standing? It is. All right, and is there any need to suction at this time? No. All right, I'm checking the step-offs uh, behind the neck. Anything found? No. All right, and JVD tracheal deviation, anything noted? No. All right, so we're going to size and apply a cervical collar measuring from the angle of the jaw to the trapezius, and we're going to apply this collar onto bare skin. Does my patient accept the interventions? Yes. As I come back and I reassess my chest, I'm um, uh, asking my partner how bad compliance is. 
The paradoxical motion remains, partner says, it's becoming more difficult to bag. Okay, so we still have paradoxical motion on this left side. Uh, we spiked on the sternal body, no damage there. Um, and if I reassess my lung sounds, what do I now have for lung sounds? Absent on the right, diminished on the left. All right, so at this point, uh, we now have a life threat. This is where now we have a type of obstructive shock with our tension pneumothorax. Uh, we're going to cleanse. I'm going to come in at the second intercostal space, mid clavicular line, and this is where now with a 14 gauge catheter, we're going to insert in the second intercostal space uh, on the affected side which is my right side with absent lung sounds uh, upon that I'm going to re auscultate my lung sounds how are my lung sounds now diminished on the right clear on the left okay so we've had uh, improvement with our intervention I'm going to uh, confirm with my partner with bad compliance yes uh, we have better back compliance? Yes. Okay. So uh, at this time, uh, we've uh, performed an intervention that has relieved the tension pneumothorax, and we're going to continue to aggressively monitor that in case it returns during our assessment. And I'm again going to tell my partner to tell me as soon as there's any change in that back compliance to immediately come back up and reassess our life threat. Uh, so now that we've come and we've reassessed our, our breathing, I'm going to come in and I'm going to palpate all four quadrants of the abdomen. I'm checking for any signs of rigidity, tenderness, any heat, any signs of anything that would tell me that there was potentially any internal bleeding. No, soft, non-distended. Okay, so we're coming in and I'm checking uh, the uh, pelvis in and down, checking for stability of the pelvis. Intact. Okay, is there any incontinence in urine or feces? Mild incontinence of urine. Okay, so at this time we're making sure that we're getting all of that wet clothing off. We're covering them with blankets and we're uh, still treating this patient for shock, as indicated as earlier. Any signs of prior prison in this patient? No. All right. So at this time, I'm going to come down and I'm circumferentially and offsetting my femurs. Do I notice any injury to my femurs? No. As I search down the leg, I'm looking, is there any deformity to the lower extremity? Any signs of uh, closed deformity, angulation, anything to the lower extremities? Right lower leg, deformed ankle. Okay, um, and when I check for a pulse in that deformed ankle, do I have a pulse? No. No pulse. All right, and I have a pulse in the non-affected ankle? Yes. All right, so at that point, we're going to use our one attempt. We're going to try to realign this ankle, put it back in this anatomical position, not fighting against resistance. After that one attempt, does that realign, and do I now have a present pedal pulse? Yes. All right, so now we have pulses that match. I'm going to direct my partner to now uh, split that in that position, and we're going to monitor that and make sure that we uh, maintain a pulse. I'm checking the upper extremities. Any signs of deformity or injury to the upper extremities? No. And as I check my radial pulses and compare them bilaterally, uh, are they equal or present? Yes. Okay. Uh, at this point, our board has come. Uh, we're going to uh, move that long board in. And this is where now in the head man's count, we have our collar in place. The uh, life threat was on the right side with the uh, intervention that we performed. So just before we uh, move them again and I reassess my lung sounds, has there been any change in the lung sounds since my last intervention? No. All right. So we're going to log move this patient towards me on the head man's count. Uh, so this is where now I'm not going on that life threat. Using the appropriate number of resources, interlocking arms at the chest and the waist, uh, head man, and we've got somebody to be able to push the board in place. We're going to come in on the head man's count. One, two, three. Patient comes up. I'm reassessing the back of the head. Any deformity? No. Checking the collar still in place? Yes. Palpating down the vertebrae. Any deformities? No. All right. And uh, incontinence, we removed any wet clothing. Did that uh, fix the incontinent problem? Yes. Any bleeding, any deformities that we didn't notice? No. All right. On the head man's count, we're going to lower this patient onto a long spine board. We're going to make sure that they are fully immobilized pro appropriately with straps across the chest, the pelvis, the knees. We're going to pat any voids. And now my patient is secured with head blocks so my partner can release a line of mobilization. We're going to try to get any type of sample history before we leave. Other than the bystander report, are we able to get any other information? No. All right, so we're loading up in the ambulance. All other interventions are going to take place on the way to a level one trauma center, minimizing our time and getting our patient to surgery. Um, in the back of the ambulance, uh, I'd like to get a baseline set of vitals. Heart rate 110, respiratory controlled by partner with BBM. Blood pressure 92 over 78. Pupils pearl, CBG 90, O2 stat 95% on high flow O2. Skin vitals are pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Okay, so we've got the heat going in the back of the ambulance. We've got warm blankets. We've got the out of wet clothes. We're treating this patient uh, for shock with 
uh, oxygen and keeping them warm. At this point, we're going to establish two large bore IVs. Uh, we're going to run uh, warm fluid, uh, and we're going to titrate that to a systolic of 90. Uh, so we'll monitor that. Uh, once we have sustained a systolic of 90, uh, we will go ahead and we'll set those to uh, TKO. Uh, at this point, because we have a multi-system trauma patient and we've been intubating this patient, uh, ventilating this patient for a period of time, we're going to go ahead and we're going to intubate the patient. So uh, upon intubation, we're going to confirm the lung sounds and end title. Ideally, we'd like the end title to be between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. We'll reassess our lung sounds. Um, our, do we still have uh, diminished lung sounds on the right and, and clear on the left since our last intervention? Yes. And our partner um, with bad compliance now, is bad compliance still adequate? Yes. All right, so now that we've completed our ALS interventions, we would go ahead and we would continue to monitor this patient. We do any uh, secondary injuries, we would go ahead and monitor those while we continue to do our head-to-toe assessment and erupt to the level one trauma center, reassessing our patient every five minutes, um, and reassessing our interventions as well as our vital signs. Upon arrival to the level one trauma center, we'll go ahead and we'll transfer our patient to an equal or higher healthcare provider.